In the world of residential electrical wiring, three-way and four-way light switch circuits can be some of the most intimidating to install and the most frustrating to troubleshoot. Today, we're gonna to get a practical, hands-on understanding of how these switches work individually and how they come together to make a complete circuit. We're also gonna dig into some practical, hands-on troubleshooting tips to make your life a lot simpler. Let's dig in. Let's start by understanding what happens inside of a light switch. Here I have some blocks made up just to give you an accurate representation of what the circuitry looks like inside of a switch. We have two lugs on the switch that are visible from the outside. And remember, we're interrupting the hot only. The neutral is gonna flow straight through or maybe be bundled together, likely a bunch of white wires. We're just interrupting the hot side of the circuit. So imagine power coming from this side, flowing over to our switch. And so we have one wire connected to this lug, visible on the outside. Same thing over here, another wire connected here, visible on the outside. And the switch in the middle, when we turn the switch off, the circuit inside opens breaking the circuit and turning the light off. We flip it the other way and electricity can flow straight through. If we look at a three-way switch, just as the name implies, we add a third lug. Imagine again, power flowing in this side. And when we flip the switch, power flows between one lug or the other. So in this way, the switch is never truly off. It's always flowing power through to one of these two lugs. So say we wanna power a light with this. A common instance that you'd use this in is say a long hallway where you wanna put a switch at either end of the hallway, both controlling the same light. So we would have these two switches likely, you know, 20 feet apart or so, the length of the hallway, connected by a pair of wires. Power comes in here, flows through here, over here, and goes out this lug to our light. To turn the switch off, or to turn the light off rather, we can flip either one of these switches. And now you can see power flows through and stops right here and is not able to continue through. If we wanna turn the light back on, we can flip either one of these switches and make the circuit causing the light to come on. So we can stand here all day and try any combination of either of these being on or off. And whenever we flip a switch, the light's gonna change from on to off or off to on, whichever we want to do. So remember, these two switches are connected by a pair of wires. In this case, they're represented by black. Typically, you're gonna see black and red or maybe black and white. Um, remember, typically white in a residential wiring setting means neutral, but when you dig into these three and four-way switches, you can't always rely on the color of the wire um, to indicate whether it's hot or neutral, it might be a switch leg. So let's say, for instance, this hallway is extra long and we wanna add a third switch. Well, we can't add a third three-way switch into this circuit. We need a four-way switch. Let's look at how a four-way switch works. If you were to open up a four-way switch, it would look something like this. We have a pair of wires coming in, or let's say coming in the top, and uh, two lugs on the bottom connected to another pair of wires. When we flip the switch, it goes from being connected crossways to straight, parallel. So every time you flip the switch, it just goes from that to that. Let's bring our circuit back into place here and see how this fits in. So to wire in our four-way switch to this circuit, we just put it in the middle between the two. We can connect up our pair of wires from the first switch to the second. And then let me grab another set here and connect the second to the third. If we look at power flowing in this lug, you can see that it flows straight through, straight through, and all the way to this lug and can power our light. We could flip any of these three switches and it would break the circuit causing the light to turn off. Let's try that. So we can flip that switch, follow it through, and the electricity stops right there so power can't get to the light. We could flip this switch and do the same. Power flows through to here and stops. We could flip this middle switch and power would flow over to here and stop right there. So now the switch, or rather the light is off. We could flip this one. Power would flow over here, over here. Oops, just knocked my connector lead off. And out to the light. Light is on, we could flip this. And now it would be off. We could flip this middle switch back on. Again, we could stand here all day long in our hallway and flip any combination of these three switches and have our light turn on and off with each uh, flip of the switch. 
If we wanted to uh, add another switch in here, say this is in the middle of a giant room and we wanted a light at each of the four corners, all we have to do is spread this out, grab another four-way switch, put it in here, and put it in this way so it's all oriented in the same direction. Connect our little sample leads up here. Remember in real life, this would, these switches would all be a long ways apart, connected by long conductors, long wires. And this works the same exact way. Let's set this straight just for demonstration purposes. So power flows in this lug. Let me twist you around a little bit so you can see. There, now you can see all the lugs on all the switches. So power flows in here, flows through, 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 clear to our light. We can flip any one of these switches. Let's do this one. Power flows over here, jumps crossways, and ends up stopping right there. Now the light's off, we could flip that one back on to turn it on. We could flip this one. Power would flow through this way, across this switch, over to this switch, across there, and out to our light. And again, we could stand here all day long, we could add as many four-way switches in line as we want, and still, we could flip any switch, and whatever the light is, if it's on, it would turn off, if it's off, it'd turn on. Here we have some actual three and four-way light switches. Let's compare them to our models. Just as the model shows, there's two lugs on the bottom, one on the top. Here we have a lug on the bottom, another lug on the bottom, and one on the top here. The top one is always going to be the common lug. Remember, in any multi-switch light circuit, you're gonna have two three-way switches. You may have some four-way switches or maybe not, but you're always gonna have two three-way switches, no more, no less. Remember that the common lugs, again, this one up here, one switch, on one switch the common lug is gonna be power in, and on the other switch, the common lug is going to feed power out to your light. Now, which one is which is not going to be intuitive without a little bit further troubleshooting. Let's dig into that now. An essential electrical tool that you won't find sold at Lowe's or Home Depot are a set of these single conductor extension leads. These leads started life as just a 15 foot long piece of parallel wire, otherwise known as lamp cord. These are just 16 gauge, they don't have to be anything heavy. Then I just you know, pulled that parallel wire apart to have two separate single conductors. Then I stripped and then crimped on a little uh, terminal there to make contact with my alligator clip here. So now I have two 15 foot pieces that I could also combine together as uh, a 30 foot long piece if I need to. So to use this to find the, which of these leads is hot here, Remember, we need a neutral and we don't have a neutral close by. So I can go over to another nearby receptacle in the wall, take that receptacle out of the wall and clip this on to the neutral side of, um, of that receptacle and stretch this out 15 feet or 30 feet if I wanna add the second one on and clip the other end to this right here. Now remember, these are gonna have electricity flowing through them, so walk gently with these. And then to test that all my connections are good, I'm gonna take and go to that same receptacle and touch the hot side of that receptacle and I should get my 120 volts right here. Confirming that all my connections are good, then I can come over to this lead sticking out of the wall that used to be connected to the common lug of my switch and is no longer. With the breaker on, I can touch this lead to this wire and if this is hot, I should get 120 volts showing here. If this wasn't, one is not, then I can go over to, say, the other end of the hallway and check the wire that was connected to uh, this terminal, or this switch, and that one should be hot. If neither of these are hot, then double check that you have your setup right here, and if you still can't get anything hot, then likely um, the problem is in the power supply, not in any of the switches or the switch wiring. Let's take a look at a worst case troubleshooting scenario. Say we have four boxes in the wall and they used to have switches in them, but somewhere along the line somebody took out all the switches. So now you're left with four boxes with a whole bunch of unlabeled wire ends sticking out of the wall. You have no idea where they go. To start off with, we're pretty sure that these four all control one light, but we're not positive. So let's confirm that. To start with, let's bring our wires back here. 
I would make sure that all of your wire ends are separated and we're gonna find the hot one in here. So with all these ends separated so they're not touching anything or grounding out on anything, we can go and turn our circuit back on and then use the multimeter to test around till we find the single hot lead. Keep on testing all of them once you've found it to make sure that there's not a second hot lead. There should only be one because power only needs to and only can come in to the circuit at one point. So with that hot lead labeled, or hot wire labeled rather, you can turn the breaker back off. We're not gonna need it again. Then the next task is to identify all these pairs of wires. We have, uh, should have pairs of wires running between boxes and we need to figure out what wires go to what box. You're gonna need your multimeter for this and you're gonna need the continuity setting with that little speaker symbol, also known as the beeper setting. And that, uh, just when we push these together, we touch those two leads together, it beeps to let us know that uh, electricity can flow through there. It doesn't flow much electricity, it's just powered by a couple batteries. So I'm gonna put one lead on this sticking out, of, on a wire sticking out of this box over here. And then on this box right here, I'm gonna keep touching around till I find the wire that makes it beep. There we go. So that tells me that wire, or that rather that electricity can flow between these two leads via this wire. So then I'm gonna grab my masking tape and a Sharpie, uh, which I also used to label that hot wire in the first box. And I'm gonna label a one and a one. And then I'm gonna go and repeat that process. I'm gonna test, uh, put a, a lead on the wire sticking out of this box and test around till I find the corresponding one in this other box and label a two and a two. And of course, these boxes are not gonna be right beside each other, so we're gonna use our test leads, or rather our extension leads, uh, to connect those two, just like so, uh, to get the length that we need and be able to check continuity. Oops, that's a yellow one. There we go, so we label that. Uh, maybe a three and a three by this point. Now keep on uh, running those numbers up. Don't reuse any of your numbers there. And repeat that process once you get all the wires in a box labeled, move on to another box. And by the end of that process, you should have all the wires labeled except one. There's gonna be one wire that feeds power out of this circuit to your light. That's not gonna be labeled yet. Then with your wires labeled, you're ready to go and wire everything up. Now two of these boxes should have a lesser number of wires because there are lesser number of lugs in the switches um, that are needed. So I'd start with power coming in and go from there. So you should have, if you started testing here, you should already know which one is hot and you can connect that to the common lead or common lug. Let's look at that actually on our switch. Remember, there's two at the bottom and this lonely one at the top. Uh, is the common lug, and that's where, in this case, the hot wire coming in gets hooked to. And then you should have two wires labeled one and two. And one and two you can get connected here and here, doesn't matter which is which. And then go to the box with the other end of wires one and two sticking out. Let's say it's right here. And then one and two would get connected here and here. Doesn't matter which is one, which is two. And it also wouldn't matter whether it gets connected up here or down here. The, the order doesn't really matter as long as they stay as a pair. As this looks on an actual switch, again, this is a pair and this is a pair. Doesn't matter which is which. So let's say we did one and two to one and two, and then this box should also have three and four, whatever the next pair is. If, that, if the way you numbered it works out to, you know, five and six or something like that, that doesn't matter. But the next pair coming out of this one, let's say it's three and four, find the, hook them to here and then find the other end of three and four. Let's say it's over in this box, hook three and four up to this switch, then five and six, hook up to here. Then the other end of five and six should hook up to your last three-way switch in the circuit, second and last three-way switch in the circuit. And then by this point, you should be narrowed down to just one lonely wire uh, as we talked about before, and that's the power going out to the light, and you can hook that up to the common, again, on your three-way switch, two at the bottom, one at the top, the lonely one at the top, 
is the common. So at this point, you should be able to go back down to your panel, flip that switch back on, and have power here and be able to work your switches. A couple of things to keep in mind when you're working with uh, three and four way circuits or really any light switches, you can use your multimeter to confirm that the switches themselves work. To do that, you just set it to that beeper setting, that ohm setting that we already talked about, and then hold one lead on that common lug and then test against one of the other lugs. So there's continuity, when the switch is flipped this way, there's continuity down here and then, but not here. So we should be able to flip the switch and have that reverse. So now there's continuity between the common and this one, but not between the common and this one. You should never have continuity between these two switch lugs. So that's a way to, to use your uh, multimeter and confirm that the switches are working as we discussed up here. We could even try it here uh, with the switch flipped one way. We should have continuity there, but not there. And then we flip the switch the other way and the continuity changes. So you can go through and test your individual switches, make sure they work right. They can wear out sometimes. Um, every time you flip a switch, there's a little spark that's created in there and that uh, creates a little microscopic layer of soot over time on the contacts and uh, eventually they will wear out. Uh, if, if they're giving you a little bit of intermittent problem, quick flips can sometimes kind of break through that layer of soot and make that contact better, but it's a sign that they're on the way out. So that's one way to test it with your multimeter. Another problem that I ran into somewhat recently and was really frustrated by until I figured it out, uh, a tenant in an apartment building complained that one of the common, uh, common area lights wasn't working and it was the same scenario. I think there were two, I guess there would have been two, three ways and a four way. And it was working when I got there, but then at some point it stopped working. And then when I left, it was working. And what the problem turned out to be is a wire, one of these pairs running between the switches, I believe, uh, is broken in between the two switches. And you know, sometimes it makes contact and sometimes it doesn't. It's right on the edge of working and not working. It was working when I left, um, but I confirmed that the switches work and I didn't have my extension leads with me. And so I wasn't able to confirm uh, that the wires between the switches had good contact. But that's a situation you can run into in an old building that has some years and some age and use on it. Um, and another place where you know these extension leads are just critical to have. In summary, remember that you should have one hot wire coming into the circuit. You should have one wire feeding out to your lights. And then each of the switches should be connected in between by pairs of wires. Get yourself a decent multimeter. I'll leave a link down in the description to the one that I personally use, and then make up a set of these extension leads and you'll be well on your way to troubleshooting any issues you might have. If you have any more questions or want some clarification on anything, drop a note down in the comments. I'll try to read those, keep up with them, and respond accordingly. If in general, you enjoy learning about how stuff works and how to fix it when it doesn't, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, tap that bell. We'll see you back for the next video.